European leaders make a beeline for Beijing to seek support for Ukraine, amongst other things, is French President Emmanuel Macron simply out of line with the West, uh, with his words on Taiwan? And what do all the latest developments mean for India? Hello and welcome to Worldview at the Hindu with me, Sohasini Heather. If the backdrop looks unfamiliar, that's because I'm coming to you from Paris this week as I've been in meetings with officials and experts talking about the latest developments, particularly for Europe and China. So let's just get you up to speed with what's happened so far. To begin with, um, you may have noticed a sudden uptick in visitors to Beijing over this week and the past few weeks after German Chancellor Scholz, uh, French President Macron, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, as well as then German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock, all visited China in the space of a few weeks. Now, each of them had a similar agenda. One was to seek China's support, uh, President Xi Jinping's support in particular, for a resolution to the Ukraine conflict, stressing that China must not support Russia militarily. Uh, in fact, in a joint statement issued, a 51-point joint statement issued between Xi and Macron, uh, they criticized the bombing of civilians. And according to French accounts, Xi Jinping actually distanced himself from Russia's war, saying, this is not my war. Now, this is very important, coming as it does, ahead of a, a, an expected spring offensive by the Ukrainian side against Russia, which has been in control of as much as 17 to 20 percent of Ukrainian territory since it began that invasion a year ago. Now, the leaders also sought to share, uh, shore up trade ties with China, which has opened up post-COVID, uh, and it was very clearly a trade push, an economic interest push to the visits, making the point that they don't want to decouple from China, but only de-risk their supply chains. And they also asked uh, President Xi Jinping to be more proactive in helping debt-ridden countries in Africa and Sri Lanka, uh, amongst others, to manage their debt and for more Chinese commitments on climate change. So those were some of the other issues. But where uh, they really appeared to have deferred views and what caused the controversy was the words on Taiwan. While von der Leyen and Baerbock were very clear, they warned that any Chinese action against Taiwan would be, quote, disastrous for the world. Macron appeared to be stepping out of line. He said, Europe should stay out of the fight between what he even called U.S. agenda and Chinese overreaction and stressed on the need for strategic autonomy and independent foreign policy for France as well as for Europe. Uh, listen in to what he said. La France est pour le statu quo à Taiwan. La France soutient la politique d'une seule Chine et la recherche d'un règlement pacifique de la situation. C'est d'ailleurs la position des Européens. Et c'est une position qui, de tout temps, a été compatible avec le rôle d'allié. Mais c'est justement là que j'insiste sur l'importance de l'autonomie stratégique. Être allié ne signifie pas être vassal. Ce n'est pas parce qu'on est allié qu'on fait des choses ensemble qu'on décide de faire qu'on n'a plus le droit de penser tout seul. Now, there's much more of those comments in an interview that he gave to French journalists who traveled with him uh, to China and back. And you can see that on the link given below. Now, Macron's words appeared to divide Europe. In fact, divide NATO as well, as he received criticism in the United States, um, as well as from some of the East European countries like Poland and Lithuania, who countered his argument that France and Europe cannot be vassal states of the United States and said, actually, they want closer uh, ties with the US and aren't seeking help or don't need help from China. Now, one of the journalists who was on the plane was Pierre Husky. He's a columnist. He's a veteran China expert, as well as the president of Reporters Without Borders, uh, also called RSF. And while in Paris, I spoke to him about what to make of Macron's visit and his words on Taiwan that he had uh, watched up close. Um, we've been looking at some of the statements of the French president. What do you think, according to you, what really was the reason for his very strong statement uh, on Taiwan, in particular, while he was in China, where he said France is not a vassal state of the U.S., almost suggesting uh, that uh, France would not perhaps uh, look at Taiwan in the same way as the United States was? What do you think was behind that? Well, first of all, you have to understand that France uh, always had an independent view of the U.S. You know, in, in 2003, for example, 
France did not take part in the US invasion of Iraq. And there is a kind of Gaullist tradition of maintaining independence. I think in this particular context, President Macron's visit to uh, China was dictated by his view that the war in Ukraine, the longer the war in Ukraine lasts, uh, the more Europe will become dependent on the US. And, and, and this is bad for what he calls a, a strategic autonomy uh, of Europe. And therefore, his trip to China was really designed to not to get China going against Russia, because he knows this is impossible, but at least uh, get China uh, on board to think about a way out of the Ukraine war. And Russia still thinks that it can hold on what it controls and maybe expand a little bit. So uh, this is not the right time for negotiations. But what the French were trying to do is, is get China on board for the day when those negotiations um, are possible. Do you think, because there is a cynicism that this is more about Europe wanting to shore up its trade with China, uh, post COVID. Uh, do you think there was an element of just basically making sure that business ties are not hurt by the tensions of the Ukraine? Obviously, business with China is an important uh, uh, component uh, of the relations with China for every single country in the world nowadays. And, and I think uh, France doesn't make uh, is not an exception and uh, and probably less than for Chancellor Scholz, because Germany is far more dependent on its uh, uh, economic presence in China than, than France is. Uh, but uh, I, I think, you know, th there is a balance to be found. And, and that's what uh, uh, Europe is trying to find between uh, doing business as usual with, with China uh, and um, thinking of the overall strategic balance of the world uh, in which China is the rising superpower and the challenge to, to the Western uh, international order. And, and I think that's uh, really that balance, which is very difficult to find. Europe is not yet talking in one voice on that issue. When Mr. Macron says it, and often in, in one speech, he mentions independence and strategic autonomy several times. Is he speaking out of step with the rest of Europe? Uh, or is this essentially uh, his vision for Europe uh, that is shared by others? And at the moment, yes, he is out of step with the rest of Europe because the rest of Europe wants to keep the Americans on board. And France is, is probably due to its own history and the fact that it has its own, uh, uh, the, you know, nuclear weapon, uh, that it has uh, a seat on the uh, UN Security Council, it has a, a specific uh, speech. Uh, sure. Now, it, it, let's move forward 18 months. If if uh, Donald Trump is elected in the US, or if Ron DeSantis, uh, another Republican, uh, gets elected, Maybe me, President Macron's uh, words might sound a little bit prophetic because Europe will wake up uh, again as during the first mandate of Donald Trump um, as wanting to protect itself from any potential damage coming from Washington. Uh, remember that Donald Trump wanted to pull the US out of NATO and he was prevented from doing so by his entourage, by the the, the uh, defense uh, establishment in the US. And therefore, uh, you know, what might sound like uh, out of step today might be tomorrow's uh, mainstream thinking. <laughs> uh, given India's position on Russia and on Ukraine at present, uh, where, where do you see India-France ties? Mm. Uh, I think uh, everybody in the West and not only in France was uh, taken by surprise by the attitude of India, but also other um, uh, non-aligned, uh, the, the new non-aligned uh, uh, version uh, of 2022 last year. Uh, and, and therefore, at the beginning, I think there was a, a, a bit of a, of a shock. Uh, I think today, uh, a lot of people understand why uh, certain powers in, in the global south, as, as we say, um, have taken that attitude and don't want to be uh, automatically aligned on, on the US or on any, anybody else uh, for that matter. Uh, and I think 
you know, we, we're ready to live with it. And I think this is uh, the, the new reality of the world. Um, and, and other cases in the world, and particularly now that uh, President Lula um, has uh, taken over in Brazil and has gone to to China with a, a very different attitude from his predecessor, uh, I, I think we can see that this is a, a global trend. Uh, so I think uh, France and, and India still have a lot uh, of work to do together. I think this is really uh, the opinion of the French leadership that uh, India is a key player in, uh, uh, in in today's world and should not um, we should not stop at at just this India Russia relationship uh, uh, in relation with Ukraine but see it in a more global world where India is is really one of the defining powers of a multipolar world. Pierre Husky there with a very unique perspective of where the French president. Uh, was coming from. Now, as we had reported at The Hindu recently, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is expected to visit France this summer. President Macron will be in Delhi later in September for the G20 summit. Uh, so India is really expected to walk its tightrope much more this summer between its friendships with Russia, Europe uh, and the US. So what should India make of Macron's statements, of the divisions in Europe, on the engagement with China? Uh, that we're seeing play out now. And remember, this is still a work in progress because we still have to see just where Europe goes as a whole. To begin with, the China visits make it clear that Europe is willing to engage with China and India on the issue as long as Asian countries stay out of the Ukraine war. Now, this is a huge shift from last year's position where they wanted Asian countries uh, to join uh, um, in support of Ukraine. They wanted them to join the consensus at the UN as well uh, as to reduce their ties with Russia. Uh, so that seems to be a big shift and it's worth watching here in India. Uh, the second is the kind of pressure that possibly India is going to face uh, as G20 chair to invite Ukrainian President Zelensky to speak at the G20 summit virtually if needed. Remember, this was also a demand from Mr. Macron uh, to Mr. Xi asking him to pick up the phone and call President Zelensky. Uh, thus far, New Delhi has resisted this kind of pressure when Ukrainian Deputy Foreign Minister, I mean Zaparova, came to Delhi last week and actually publicly called for an invitation for Ukraine to the G20. Uh, the MEA spokesperson said India has already announced its guest special guest list of invitees to the G20 and it is a list that doesn't actually include Ukraine at present. However, Macron's uh, words uh, there on his visit to China in indicate that there will be less pressure on China and India to reduce their ties with Russia as well. During Russian Deputy Prime Minister Manturov's visit to Delhi this week, in fact, India and Russia vowed to increase their trade that has already nearly tripled since last year and to seek new ways to pay in national currencies and obviously the oil intake that has grown exponentially more than 30 to 40 percent uh, uh, times is actually also likely to continue. Finally, Ma uh, Macron signals a less confrontational approach to China in the Indo-Pacific. At least with these words, that's what it sounds like. So India should prepare one for a, a very close strategic partner uh, to be not as tough on China as perhaps one had expected but also for a different kind of Indo-Pacific engagement with France and even the EU uh, than at present India has with countries like US, Japan and Australia that have decided to be much more confrontational. So what's worldviews take on the entire uh, development, regardless of the context and the concerns over China, France's push for strategic autonomy is one that should strike a chord in India. For years, this is a policy that has kept Indian interests and independence at a premium and has also meant that in times of adversity, like, of course, decades ago when the West sanctioned India over nuclear testing, France actually maintained its strategic partnership with India. Um, so the strategic autonomy is a policy that cannot just be wished away. Let's get you some reading recommendations. And I'm afraid I have very few this week. Um, particularly because we have very little time, uh, but one is certainly engaging the world Indian foreign policy since 1947. This is edited by Sumit Ganguly, uh, 
but it has a very interesting chapter in it by Jean-Luc Racine on the India-France relationship and you will find that interesting. Uh, there's also Macron's own, if you want to get into the mind of Macron, if you like, uh, Macron's own words. These are basically speeches put together and it's a presidential memoir more than anything else. Uh, but it gives you insight into where Macron wants to go with his uh, strategic autonomy plan for Europe. Then there is the last president of Europe, uh, Emmanuel Macron's race to revive France and save the world by William Drozdiak, of course, the last president of Europe, uh, giving Macron that kind of position that perhaps only Angela Merkel had in the past. Uh, then there is another collection of essays, India's foreign policy in the post-COVID world. I've spoken about this one before. It's edited by former ambassador Surinder Kumar. It has a chapter in it by former ambassador to the EU, Manjeev Singh Puri, on the India-EU relationship, which is well worth reading. There's also former ambassador Bhaswati Mukherjee's book, India and the EU and Insider's View. Um, so we hope you do have some things to read on the issues today. Uh, but we do thank you for joining us here on Worldview. We'd also like to make a special request that you subscribe to the Hindus YouTube channel so you can keep up with all that we do here from the team here. Thanks for watching.